Good morning once again. Well, I appreciate you are still there after a nice lunch. I'm Mitchell Levin. I work in a company with a long uh, uh, name, but actually it's uh, uh, base AOT. I will tell you about modern trace. Uh, I have started on this project about uh, since 2009. This project has been around for 27 years. What is modern trace? Where the traditional trace ends and modern trace starts? Uh, more than, uh, traditional strays is uh, the thing uh, everybody knows about. But what is this uh, type of strays, a modern strays? Let's say you know everything, uh, so maybe you don't need uh, uh, any modern strays. The entire strays is conventional one, the older type, or modern strays. It's rather, it's very highly judgmental definition. I decided to define modern strays uh, actually as these strays which we uh, start start working with right now, uh, free of box. Everything which started since 2009 is modern. Uh, before 2009, uh, conventional, traditional, quite consistent. There is reasoning in it. Uh, as to the conventional strays, I uh, remind you very briefly, it's a set of features to be divided notionally into four groups, features, uh, uh, controlling what these trace is. Uh, Showing whether to string, uh, print or not to print, uh, how to do that, how to uh, print the lines, string format, string size, uh, systemic uh, challenges, encryption, uh, abbreviate output, or different options uh, which we read from those uh, descriptors. Actually, uh, traditional trace has got a system of call filtering. What is this filtering all about? Trace can only uh, show some of these trace codes. Uh, uh, these traditional trace can compile and show the statistics on systemic uh, calls, account time, and calls, and errors for each system call, different options. C option, it could get connected to the already existing processes, or it can trace the processes which are generated in the process of works. So of those processes, it traces, we could retrace these, there could be different files, different pipelines, they're, they're traditional things, I will not speak about it. It's a system called statistics, we have got all the documentation, you can check it out. I'll tell you what emerged recently. All those features can also be tentatively defined, uh, uh, not in the four traditional groups, but in some groups. There is one more group, which is rather new as well. First, I'll speak in details about most interesting things. Uh, actually, that's what we can show. Uh, those uh, traces have got different uh, features, different abilities. It's extended tracing. We can uh, ask the stress to show names of the files which uh, correspond to descriptors. We can see details of different protocols which uh, correspond to the sockets. We can see different functions, and we can see path names, access by name or descriptor, IP option, and we can see regular expression it trace, rechamp on optional specifications, it trace or spec. We could look at it differently. We could look at different constants and different no syscall classes. It's possible to filtrate them along the path, along the way by descriptors. There are no syscall classes. Uh, and now there are no opportunities of compiling statistics. It's system
system call statistics. Uh, actually, it could be wall clock times, patents in calls, the W option. Uh, we can combine statistics with regular output C option and other types of regulations. And this doesn't look like anything else. We can change uh, those uh, uh, calls, system call tempering. There are four different types. This is called tempering. We can do fault injection, and we can return value injections, and we can inject uh, the delays as well. Signal injection could be delay injection as well. We'll start from filters. We have got system called filtering issues. Last year, uh, actually, traces uh, were uh, got extra support. Glibc DC actually uh, they are supported in different programs for many years on now, and then traces have been around for many many years on now. And uh, as to the support, it only appeared last year. That's rather strange. That's bizarre, but nonetheless, that's the way it is. When it emerges, emerged, it uh, turned out to be very convenient. Uh, I think it's very convenient to use it. It's easier than the longer Cisco lists. It's easier to uh, just uh, retrieve them. Sometimes there aren't enough of those uh, lists. Uh, and there is the example from real life. Uh, uh, there was the, in the kernel there was the systemic call open dances uh, call open out more than architectures came along without uh, any sys call open but only open out and then after a while and uh, glibc uh, actually on Linux uh, they unified the system and all the users of this sys call they were open in all the places where it was used at open out. So the conventional uh, Linux open function now uh, it, now it's is called open art. As the result, all the scripts which traced open to this in its glibcy uh, to one by twenty five by two to one by twenty six, uh, they are not functioning normally. Nothing is there. Uh, so then uh, people change scripts, uh, started writing open ad, uh, but at all glibc doesn't work as well. Imagine that there are some statistical programs, then there would be a mix, a mixture, different options. Uh, uh, so there could be some other option and some other lib. Uh, so traditional approach would be just to enlist them. But it turns out that this traditional approach of enlistment is not possible. It will not be uh, shifted to those which are not there. If in list file there is no, it's not that there will be the syntax mistake. So. Why do we have to filtrate these calls? We can get everything uh, out of port it but not filter. But what are you going to do with this? Uh, when you don't quite know what you're uh, tracing, then maybe it, you could do this way. Moreover, then we'll use to the maximum the methods of stack tra tracing if you don't know what you're looking. You'll connect everything which is possible, then you figure out what you're tracing. But you're, if you're writing scripts or when you understand more or less what you're tracing, then uh, there should be more uh, explicit and precise uh, output for it to work uh, rapidly, uh, for work fa fast, you need filtration. Sometimes your scripts uh, uh, could be damaged. There could be more different data you didn't expect, but actually, open up at. Here you can see regular expressions, a trace, <coughs> so it's a, uh, a naive approach is not too exact. People are very lazy, they don't do that in practice. <laughs> They just write down slash open, I select all syscalls uh, uh, which contain open, and what do you see? Syscalls actually, there are more though, which are started to open out, and there are different architectures here, and uh, people think that they'll never find anything extra, but if you uh, find open by handle lockdown, they were not just unlucky, most unlucky guys who find this. 
But of course, I uh, uh, think you should use the exact uh, expressions if you need something for your text right now. And now, if you're writing the scripts, maybe you'll have a very uh, exact regulator in this slide. There, are, there is a utility, enigmatic utility, which is called NSN4. It's a uh, uh, syscall information call. Anybody of you have heard about this uh, utility? Although it's uh, although it's part of this uh, project, it's not part of release of any release whatsoever. So maybe you haven't heard about it actually. But with its help, we can get information for these calls, the number of arguments in different architectures. It's used. Uh, it's using this database. It's the most exact and precise in the world. No other one like this. But actually, some features, interface common lines, are not quite stable yet. Uh, I think it's too sophisticated to my mind. Uh, as soon as we, as we include something else in the release, we should support it. We should support the uh, feedback, uh, com uh, interoperability, and compatibility. When everything's streamlined, you can use it freely now. You could use it with great care. But you can start using it even now when you compile some of the details of it. Another filtration is the new class of calls. There are some traditional syscall classes uh, to filtrate by files, by memory, by descriptors, so on and so forth. Why do we need those classes at all? Because traditional enlistment is very sophisticated and complex. Sometimes it's too challenging or not possible at all because in different architectures they're called differently. Uh, there are some plays in some other architectures they are not there. It's very difficult to write down the one which will be shifted uh, uh, every place. Now it's slightly simpler you know, when there is a new system of call classes. But anyway, it's not ideal uh, option. So uh, we adopt new classes uh, from time to time. A short while while ago, we added up some uh, more new classes, uh, new single uh, classes, uh, which describe different uh, capacities of stat family. Why stat? Uh, it's a very uh, extensive and rather modeled up family. Uh, it's a bit obscured and uh, mixed. I'll explain why. Uh, it's very old and rather obscure. We can even trace the evolution of Linux kernel for syscalls where stat, 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 and so on. The new editions of those syscalls appeared, and those ones were uh, renewed, recalled old starts. Uh, then there were uh, some analog. analog uh, and on device trees, then uh, uh, some other uh, family calls, stat s, stat x uh, appeared as well to replace all the previous ones. Stat x will replace all the previous ones. How will stat x replace and substitute all the previous calls? How do you imagine that? Most of them uh, don't use stat x. Even in group C, stat x support, stat x support appeared only in the last uh, version which uh, 2.28 which was released this summer before that we had to call it somehow manual let's say you're using stat x and your program is working on the kernel which doesn't uh, support it so you'll need fallback and practice uh, it could be any system call out of this family and you can also it can be anything in different architectures it could be very diverse very different you don't have you d uh, cannot rely on anything hence those no classes uh, uh, of syscalls to make life easier for you, for you know, to know exactly what you need and not to lose anything. Continuing on stack tracing uh, topic, in one of the previous examples, there was the K minus Y, that is to print uh, uh, the paths associated with those scripts. More stacked and extended tracing includes the previous one, which enables us to see the details of all the protocols which are in line with those. It's uh, just a very simple example. Uh, it's a bit artificial, of course, far-fetched rather. I cut out everything you don't have to see here. As soon as the socket has got the system information, traces are shown here. Before it was connected, it didn't show it. When uh, a socket is connected, there is source port, destination port, and so on. 
One could it be quite useful and convenient for us. Of course, it's common knowledge that sometimes we have to know everything in big amounts. Uh, but if it's very big and entangled program, we don't know what to do. It's, it's not. Uh, it's rather obscure. Description number three. What is it all about? Anything. You name it. If such a SIM call uh, mm, sends some descriptors, how should we figure out what we should actually uh, uh, record? Uh, what should we shift? When there is a very big and way too sophisticated program, it's not very easy. Another type of uh, uh, tracing, it's stack of uh, function calls, it uh, minus K option. It appeared recently, and it enables us to see some interactions of sys calls are different uh, and uh, application logic when you don't quite, uh, quite understand why this application should have those sys calls you can clarify the picture there is some uh, program here but for some reason CAD is uh, just uh, uh, closing some parts of information there is some reasoning in it uh, you'll see that uh, actually there is the change of function what it does after the work is completed and the reasoning is very simple. Uh, how should it guarantee to the user that it performed everything it was called asked? If he, it doesn't, uh, if it cannot, if uh, there is no file defug, it couldn't. It would end it with a zero return code or code of completion. Here, everything's all right, but in principle. You can also see what is going on. I heard about different interesting applications. Uh, uh, let's say there is very sophisticated multi-processor, uh, multi-flow uh, applications. Many parts are exchanging data, and suddenly data appears, which you saw as error, in order to trace where they came from uh, and to understand the reason, the cause. This will be very useful for you. Another. Uh, just uh, ability for us to set the output information of named constant and flags, not just characters and symbols, uh, but also other options. Uh, so sometimes we should have, uh, sh should like to see both. Uh, it could be very useful for us. Let's say you suspect that the application could uh, mix up the order of something, the way it uh, just uh, deals with this calls first it might look bizarre why should it mix it up but semantics of sys calls in different, in different architectures is different some use the uh, shifted the application from one uh, system to another and it's damaged sometimes and uh, with this option or this feature you can in part disconnect uh, a parsing of the uh, semantics and you see what is going on if you mistake such bugs that's how it could be helpful for you Let's now get down to statistics. This is traditional statistics. This is this uh, time uh, spent in sys calls. This is option how many sys calls were made. Uh, the amount of sys call time spent. A traditional feature on top of that we were asked to adapt to system time. System time also to measure real time, local loop time, the time which uh, the uh, clock on the wall uh, spent while, while you were at it, well, clock time spent in sys calls. Uh, what's in it for us? How can it be useful? The thing is that many sys calls are sleeping. Uh, actually, uh, uh, sys calls and the major task is uh, to sleep, but there are some sys calls which can sleep due to delays in input, output, or whatever. There is a bottleneck of up the number. It's not about the number of sys calls, but something else. Maybe it's relevant for us to figure out what exactly maybe the program was added up by some delays in order to resolve some problems then those problems were debugged or people added up some delays and those people disappeared those guys disappeared such could happen, could happen uh, delays are still there with the help of this statistic we can pinpoint those and troubleshoot those problems uh, a few words about how do we run uh, tracing we have got different features here there is one feature on input of stress uh, 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 mode uh, and uh, when the stress does not uh, run the process traditionally uh, but actually goes into the background instead that way 
uh, it's much more transparent. Why do we need a potential? Let's say there is the interaction between different processes. You should not destroy them. Uh, this is an example that shows that that this option, uh, stress goes into a different mode, background stress. Um, and uh, the process that was started by stress uh, runs as such, and uh, stress goes background. Uh, there could be cases that it is useful. Uh, for example, in this way you could trace all processes in a certain container. You just start uh, by trace uh, in it, uh, uh, and the trace uh, will be uh, for some time uh, foreground, and then it will start in it, and then go to background. And this way you can continue tracing. One more uh, topic, uh, not stress, but aggregator, rather. Uh, sometimes it's convenient to uh, split up uh, um, results of stress into separate files because there's too many, too much information, and it is easier to process and analyze them uh, when they are split into certain uh, separate files. And it's uh, uh, simpler to look uh, up some information when it's in one file, not in several. And also, when we don't see the gaps between output and input or whatever, in order to see that in, in the aggregated way, uh, there is a utility. It doesn't make it colorful as uh, blue, uh, red. It, uh, I did it myself so that you see uh, different uh, uh, items there in this aggregated picture. Um, but nevertheless, this is good to have an, the, an aggregated uh, view. Uh, and there is a tool for that, a uh, utility for that. Uh, it's uh, easy to use, and it's less chance that you make a mistake. Uh, and now we go to the most unusual thing, and that a system called tampering. This is a new feature that is very different compared to what was available in Strace. Uh, a revolutionary, actually, feature. Uh, and the uh, idea of Strace upside down completely. Uh, with the help of tampering, uh, you could use Strace for testing. Uh, first, this called fault injection uh, was invented as injector of uh, errors, but rather fault injector, I call it. Then others were added, other types of injections, as you see here. Uh, error. Uh, uh, this method, uh, fault injection, in the tool set of the people who do testing, uh, has been existing uh, for quite some time. And uh, this uh, is easy to uh, introduce errors in some uh, calls. Why would that? be uh, necessary to add errors. Don't we have enough errors already? Well, the point is that uh, we need to um, simulate the situation. We need, to, we need to model a situation in which certain errors occur, and it's difficult sometimes to do. In this way, it is cheaper, it is easier, more convenient to insert certain errors, and then uh, um, you can model the situation. For example, we can inject the error into a third system call and, and so on. Uh, Strays uh, actually is used in that uh, to test uh, decoders of syscalls that they work the situation correctly when the situation is difficult to, to uh, uh, represent, to, to uh, recreate, and uh, it is easy in this way. A few more examples. Uh, besides testing, we could use this uh, new type of uh, uh, utility for active search for errors. For example, uh, author of this feature, prototype of this feature, uh, found that uh, bug in Python 3.5 and uh, uh, 
when uh, it was launched, when the random file is accessed, uh, there was uh, errors were not were not verified, and uh, it uh, led to a number of other failures. As a result, in object address and uh, um, that was corrected quite a while ago, but we remembered the story, how it was discovered, and um, it is still there. And one more uh, error of that type that was found with the Cisco injection. Uh, it is in uh, linker dynamic, uh, G uh, lib C. Um, and in one location, it earlier was not terrified. Some um, sector of memory was not supposed to be accessible. It was accessible. Uh, nothing happens, nothing, but it's a security glitch. A glitch. It's a security implications that could follow. Um, and that was fixed, of course, too. My myself did it actually fixing. Uh, one more type of injection. This is the most popular. Then there were some other types less uh, evident. You can inject not only errors. You can inject uh, 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 random code of uh, re retrieval, uh, and uh, you can. In this example, uh, inject such code, and of course you cannot do that with any syscall because you would uh, uh, break uh, semantics. Uh, um, but something into the user memory, uh, you can uh, inject, and you have to be accurate, of course. And there are syscalls that do not write anything and return zero. It, they can be injected in this uh, with this. Uh, very easily, and this is the real case that we had not long ago. We were debugging a program that was writing something gradually into temporary files and was transferring that to other programs and deleting those. And uh, we injected unlink, and those files uh, stopped to be deleted. And this is an example that is shown now. The program was a little bit more complex, but nevertheless, in the, uh, we did success in check. Uh, we injected success, and the application was uh, quite uh, easy to analyze. So we were able to analyze it immediately uh, when it was happening, and it could be useful in a situation like this. And in conclusion, uh, delay injection. A few words about that. Uh, this is uh, quite interesting. Who would like to insert delays? Stress is uh, already quite slow, right? The doing the tracing, um, but we are talking about delays, uh, selective delays, not just general delay, as in other types of injection that allows uh, testing, uh, where you suspect something, uh, semantic cause that the uh, kernel cannot guarantee if those uh, nanoslips uh, with the argument of one nanosecond was called, and there's no guarantee that it will mm, be longer, two nanoseconds, three nanoseconds, and for verification of that, for testing of that, you need, uh, you can do this, or you could use it to delay some, uh, ran, uh, some selective operators, uh, operations. Uh, for example, there is new traffic generated, and there is no means to control it, to monitor this. Um, you can use uh, this to uh, selectively. Uh, delay uh, uh, for testing purposes. That is a program that allows also to measure uh, the speed. And you can see that the speed uh, was considerably lower, three times lower, actually. Uh, that is what I wanted to uh, talk to you about, about new Stray's features. Although Stray's is 27 years old now already, but it is still being developed. Uh, new features uh, uh, added that could be useful in real life. Uh, last year, the program got this uh, 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 this character as a symbol.
Вопросы, пожалуйста. Questions now. Я вижу руку. Ну, ту, которую первую видел, I see the hand here. Uh, the, the arm. Yeah, oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, question in English will be really good. Hi, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, I have two, uh, two questions about uh, syscall tempering. What would happen if you injected a positive value to, to a syscall like open? It would return uh, uh, something that the program would think was a descriptor, and what would happen next? Uh, thank you. Which language should I use? Okay. So, uh, it would pretend that the open syscall just returned a valid descriptor, which is really not the case because there will be no open syscall invoked. But it would pretend that it actually returned a valid syscall. And uh, an application would assume it has a valid descriptor while it doesn't. So, it would go. Uh, a really strange way. Yeah. You probably should do this with care. <laughs> yes, sir, thanks. And another question: um, Is this a, like, is this a, in any way a modular? Because this would be a great thing to use in, for instance, uh, testing frameworks to inject certain uh, values, return values to system calls. Is this uh, a part of some library, or is it all in the executable? Well, the traditional service is an executable, so it was not designed as a library, and it is still not a library. But we have some not really plans but we hope to make it a library someday uh, there are some issues with licensing like what kind of license we would choose to be compatible with everything because well like we'll see it will require some some work to do to make it a library hi uh, thanks for the talk um, I'm, I'm wondering that this can also be used to get a different class of errors. For example, uh, if you find that you can force a program to go into a certain branch and then forget to free some memory. So you could use that in combination with Volgrind and other tools to find memory leaks or file descriptor leaks. What are your thoughts on the preference of using S-Trace for that or maybe using some other sort of fault injection for user space? I think you can combine S-Trace with while green without any changes nowadays. I haven't really tried this, but you can actually inject uh, uh, an error into the traced process and then use Walgreen to see what's going on. I don't think we have any problems with this right now, but I haven't tested it by myself. But I think it should work. Why not? Any more questions? Yes. Hi. Thanks uh, for the talk. So I have a question about injections too. It's so getting popular. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for example, I want to insert a sleep injection in a cycle. So can I set some kind of lifetime property? Um, because for example, I what want... What is a lifetime property? For example, Sorry? I want this sleep to happen only once or twice or three times. Yeah, you can do this right now. Uh, I. Don't really have a man page here, but this is it. Yeah, it's here. So you can specify not just the error number, but when to eject. So like uh, when to start injecting on which Cisco location, and then how often to to inject. So we have some flexibility. It's not really any kind of thing you would like to do, but the most probably useful. We also plan to integrate uh, more complicated stuff like uh, binding with Lua, but it will be not as easy to program. I mean, to use a command line, it's very easy, as you can see. But to write a program in an, any embedded language, it will be like, much less easy to use. But it will be more flexible, I think. Is it the answer to your question? Oh. Okay. Right. Uh, hello, thank you for your talk. Okay, what about uh, why ostrich? And so is, it, is it somehow related to injection, like a head? To not really. To? Nope. Uh, so in many languages, uh, ostrich sounds more or less like a stress. So, for example, we we also call it der Strauss. Uh, it's in German. It's more or less like a stress. And in many uh, Eastern European languages, like in Czech and Russian and in me, it sounds more or less, uh, it resembles a stress. So it's a sound, sound, sound roots, yeah. And it's nice. <laughs> uh, yes, so I wanted to ask, 
uh, maybe you said it, but I probably missed uh, the injection. Does it replace the function call or does it only change the return value? It cancels. Uh, so actually, we have two ways to, to do this. The first one is to replace this call number with, with an invalid one, with minus one. Uh, so it means that no syscall is going to actually happen. And the kernel returns an error, and then we replace the error returned by the kernel with the error specified in the command line, if necessary. Uh, another way is to inject a, a so-called pure syscall, like get pid. Uh, a syscall that never fails, or more or less. And then substitute the return, return code with, with the one that's specified. So uh, that's why how we do this. So actually, no syscall, no, this is syscall that uh, the application was expecting to invoke. This one is is not invoked unless it's a, it's a, a, a pure syscall and we we are substituting using pure syscalls. Mm -hmm. And sorry, a second question. And does it work also with uh, when attaching to a, run, a running process? Can you? Yeah, it does work. Thank you. Okay. The next one. Okay. I will I will ask in Russian. I will ask in Russian. Uh, thank you for your interesting presentation. I have a question. If I correctly understand how Trace works, when I connect to a process that already launched with a follow option, I will uh, do tracing of this process and all new forks. Not only new forks, uh, but when you connect to the process that is running, uh, you uh, connect to all the trends, uh, all the or all the newly started, and if they are already uh, daughter processes, but not red, separate processes, all the processes that uh, the kernel believes are daughter, like thread, uh, type they will be traded, uh, traced, sorry, and direct. Uh, 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 directly uh, started the uh, child process they will not be tracing. We use this uh, feature uh, that you could uh, name all the uh, threads uh, and uh, if you want to also do the, do uh, the child processes you could do it manually but you have to know who the parents of the processes. Do you think it's Convenient? It's not convenient. How can you imagine an interface like that that would include that feature? What would be the option? Uh, sorry that I am asking question, but this is a, a dialogue. You know, we have a, a sort of dialogue. I didn't know that it was a, 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 to be a type of dialogue. When you suggest a new feature in your question, then I have to ask questions to you, right? Okay. And. Um, uh, okay, we understand each other. Uh, we have yeah. some time left. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Maybe I missed also, you were speaking about classes. And uh, is it possible uh, today or tomorrow uh, in the future to set certain uh, syscall set of the user, uh, define it somehow and say that it's my class, my specific class? and what you see as application for that. Thank you very, very, very much when you suggest something. Uh, this is a good way for me to learn what people like to have and what not. Um, but at least to, I need to understand why would you need this. I want to trace uh, some set of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, we had a project a while ago that we tried to de design a tool that would allow us to uh, somehow go into the process that are running and to count uh, calls, for example, those calls were coming from uh, outside. And they were uh, saying to us, please count how many of that type of calls, syscalls, how many of that type of syscalls were happening in the course of running of this application. And it would be nice for such a case uh, to have this, uh, uh, well, it would be easier than to simply write. Yeah, we had to generate some sort of library that uh, the priority and some other 
that would then be replaced with our own rappers and would allow us to count. But if we define it as classes in your stress, then, well, probably not through common life. It would be more convenient to go through some configuration file, maybe. The question is whether I can define the class. Well, there is a difficulty with transferability. If you do it in one architecture, and then you have to move it in a different... Okay, thank you very much. We will have to finish with questions now. Thank you very much to the speaker. Well, the speaker hands over the t-shirt to whom, well, I'm going to use my subjective uh, bias criteria. Uh, not the funniest question, but the most useful question for me. It's the one whereby there was the suggestion of Triple mm -hmm. F. It's just because good interfaces are very seldom being suggested and often. Uh, triple F, <laughs> write it down on this T-shirt. Triple F. Um, uh, Maybe. Second one will price will go to. There was one quite funny uh, and cheerful question about the fanatics and why. Yes. Ostriches. Ostriches uh, are worth of coffee. That's what ostriches are made for. Coffee. Well, thank you very much to the speaker once again.